Galactic from Galactic's Tutorials, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a free professional 24-7 bucket server for Mac. I'm also going to show you how to give your server a website name for free, and I'm going to show you how to make it virtually impossible for hackers to hack you. So, let's begin. What you have to do is right click on your desktop, create a new folder, name it whatever you want. I'll name it server for simplicity. Now what you have to do is go in the link in the description. Uh, craftbucket.com download the latest recommended build uh, I'll update the link always like whenever there's new whenever there's a new update so it works for any version of Minecraft so don't be discour discouraged so uh, wait for it to download and then drag it onto your desktop now it doesn't matter which build you have as long as it's the latest recommended version all you have to do is just uh, rename it to craftbucket.jar and drag it in your server folder. Then what you gotta do is open up text edit. Uh, new window, wait, let me just do something. Okay, new document. Then go in the description and copy and paste this. This is basically just a terminal command telling your computer to allocate one gigabyte of RAM to the server. Now, what is RAM and how much do I have? Okay, so RAM is basically random sorted memory. It um, it's basically the amount of memory that can uh, be trans be read uh, from your hard drive at a time. So to see um, how much RAM you have, uh, just go into About This Mac, and it should say it right over here. Now I have 20 gigabytes of RAM because I upgraded mine. Usually people have four to two gigabytes of RAM, so that's okay. Uh, if you have four to two to two gigabytes. This is a good amount of RAM. One gigabyte of RAM is good for uh, if you have one to two because um, you really want to allocate one quarter or one half of your RAM to your server if you want to dedicate that much. Um, you don't want to dedicate three quarters or all of your RAM or else your computer will crash or become extremely slow. So I suggest dedicating a quarter, if not a half, half of the amount of RAM from your computer to your server. And this is one gigabyte of RAM, 1024 megabytes, 2048 megabytes is one gigabyte, uh, and so on. Uh, one gigabyte of RAM equals 20 players, so if you have one gigabyte of RAM dedicated to your server but you want 40 players on, can't do that or else your server will cr crash. So um, you need two gigabytes uh, for 40 people. So it's basically 20, uh, it's, oh, sorry I can't speak, 20 players per 1 gigabyte of RAM. Just keep that in mind. So close that window and save it as start dot command. Now you need the dot command part. I don't really care about the start part. You just need the dot command. Um, cancel. Wait. Ooh, oh my god, I almost forgot about something. Gotta make it plain text. God, I'm stupid. <laughs> save it as um, start dot command. Basically, you need it saved as start dot command. You cannot, and you need it in plain text. It cannot be in the fancy text, or else it will not work like that. So now all you have to do is open up terminal. Basically, it's right. It's this little thing. Yes, I'm not going to go into great detail about this. So type in chmod a plus x space. You need the space. Basically, this is just allowing your server to run. Yeah, it's just allowing your server to run. So, close this. Click enter. Usually, on your first time, it would start your server, but since I did this multiple times, I'm just going to do that. Close this. I was just generating folders. Uh, if it didn't like uh, start for you when you typed in chmod a plus x and you drag it in and press enter, then it would just start when you double click start dot command. Okay. So, this is just generating everything. Do not close this. You do not want to do it while it's running. What you do want to do is stop your server, click enter, and then once it says process completed, then you want to stop your server. Okay, so in order to allow your server to run 24-7, you want to go into system preferences. You want to go into energy saver, and you want to set it so that computer sleep is never, and then display sleep is one minute. Now what this basically does is it allows your computer to run even when it's asleep. So it basically runs background applications like a server. So yeah, it's pretty simple.
very easy to do. It allows your server to run 24-7. Now, what you have to do is go into network and then memorize this IP address. Now, why do you need to memorize it? And why is it blacked out? Well, the reason why I blacked that out is because if people have this internal IP address, then people can hack your computer. The reason why I do not want people to hack my computer is fairly obvious. So, basically, you do not want to give this out. However, some people who make servers stupidly give this out. Or they give out their external IP address, which is better, but still, I do not like giving out my external IP address. That is why I'm going to show you how to make your... Uh, the peep... No. God, I cannot speak. That is why I'm going to make your server IP address a domain name and subdomain name, which is also known as a website name. So, memorize this. Memorize the first nine digits and the first eight digits. It's very important. So, go on the link in the description. Um, should bring you up to this site. Basically, what this is, is it's a website showing you how to port forward for any router. So in order to port forward, basically you need to know your router brand name. So it would be like Netgear, Linksys. Then you need to know your uh, model name. It should be on your router. If it's not, you probably just need to look more. So I'm going to do an example. Uh, I'll do Netgear for example. Go to a random model. I'll go on this model. Um, Okay, so basically, you uh, do that and click on default guide, and it's going to bring you to a little series of instructions on how to port forward. Now basically what you have to do is you have to type in your default gateway. Now what is your default gateway? It is your IP address without the last digit. For example, it is the first eight digits of your IP address, like this. So. Once uh, you type in your IP address and t the, your default gateway or the first eight digits of your IP address, you click enter and it should bring up this. Now, it, this is basically your username and password. By default, it is admin and your password is password. This is different, just means that, um, could mean that someone that also has access to your router might have changed it or it is by default something else and if it is, I suggest contacting your uh, the creator of your router. So basically, once you've done that, you go into advanced settings on the menu, or if there is not advanced settings, you can go on to like I don't know port forwarding, port triggering if it's on there, or I don't know some whatever this is. Uh, yeah, port forwarding. Uh, add a custom service if it allows you to. Usually, it just says add a service. Um, basically you type in the service name, like, uh, I don't know, Minecraft server, uh, leave this the same, type in 25565 and 25565, you could type in 25566, however, you, if you type in 25566, then you cannot have your, um, your IP address as a website name, or domain and subdomain name, so that's the only, that's the problem, if you type in 25566 instead of 25565, so I highly highly recommend that you type in 25565 then type in your entire IP address and then click apply, apply sorry uh, once you once that's done go on to this website uh, click on registry uh, basically these are domain names now these are not names that this, this is not going to be what people have to type in for your server However, this is going to be a part of what you, they type in, so choose very wisely. So, say, uh, moo.com. So basically, what this is, well, this is, the reason why it's blacked out is because my external IP address, and I don't really want people having my external IP address. So, for the subdomain name, what the subdomain name is, is basically what they're going to type in, and then moo.com, or whatever you chose. So, for example... I would make it the name of your server. So my server's name is Galacticraft. So galacticraft.moo.com. Get it? So say you did, I don't know, jumping crab or whatever you have. So galacticraft.moo.com or whatever you choose. Click save. 
Now, the reason why it's not saving for me is because I already have five host names. But for you, it will save, and you can make four others if you want. So, uh, going to click out of that. Then what you got to do is you have to run your server. Very simple. Very easy. Then go into Minecraft. Right over here. And... Your server is running. Congratulations, you now have a Minecraft server. And you can run around and everything. But there is still more. What? There's still more? Yes, there is still more. Okay, so basically you have to make yourself op. So by doing this is you have to type in your username in the op folder. This basically allows you to be have all the permissions that that are in your plugins and it basically allows you to have all the commands and allows you to edit the spawn now um, let me go over some server dot properties now these are very important um, allow nether is fairly obvious you can leave that to true or false uh, world name do not I wouldn't mess with this it just makes things a bit more complicated if you change the name basically the next time you start your server um, it will change the world names so, for example, if I made it uh, Galacticraft, I'm going to create a new series of folders called Galacticraft, Galacticraft Nether, Galacticraft The End, and these folders would become useless and Galacticraft would become the ones that I use. But I just leave, like leaving it world because it's a lot simpler and there's no need to change it to Galacticraft. So, uh, enable query, leave this to false, leave this to false too. Uh, default port, definitely leave this if you have it 25565. If you have it something different, change it. But it won't work with the website name. So, uh, level type default, I would leave this the same. Uh, you can change it if you want, I don't really care. Uh, enable recon, leave that to false. Uh, level seed, if you want to change the level seed, you can. Uh, server IP, leave this blank. Now, some people usually type in their IP address. However, if you change your IP address, like say you reset your router, then basically you have to go back into your server type in the IP address again, then port forward again, or change your, uh, yeah, then you have to port forward again, so that's very annoying. Just leave this blank so that the next gem you restart your server, not restart your router, then all you have to do is uh, port forward again, and you don't have to go back into here and wonder why your server is not working. So just leave this blank. Uh, max build height, uh, 256, you can lower this if you want, I don't. Uh, spawn NPCs, leave this true or false, it's fairly obvious what it does. Uh, whitelist false. Basically, this may if you set it to true, it will be a private server, and whoever's username is in the uh, whitelist.txt will be able to actually go on your server. Uh, animal spawn. You can leave this to true. If you do not want animals, leave this to false. But I would like leaving this to true. Snooper enabled. Um, I really like leaving this to false because it makes it a lot, a lot easier for me. Because if you have snooper enabled, then people can see your internal IP address. You do not want that. Okay, so hardcore, leave this to false. On if you want hardcore, it doesn't matter. Texture pack, I would just leave that to blank. Online mode, true, allows people to actually, allows, uh, leave this to true. If someone told you to leave it to false, then they act, then they're the stupidest person on the entire planet. If you leave this to false, that means that hacked clients, um, hacked uh, cracked accounts can actually get onto your server people don't even have to like be on actual accounts to get on your server so you need to leave this to true if you leave it to false then basically your server will be hacked like a crap ton so leave this to true P pvp true or false depends on what you want difficulty it's like uh peaceful uh easy normal hard or hard yeah you could change this to different numbers. I think zero is peaceful, one is easy, and two is normal, three is uh, hard. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, game mode, uh, basically this is just, I, I don't really switch this because other plugins like Multi World or uh, Essentials handle this, so I would just leave it to zero. Max player is 20. Again, if you have one gigabyte of RAM dedicated to your server, I would set this to 20 or less. If you have Two gigabytes of RAM dedicated server, forty or less, and so on. Monster spawn true, or you can leave it to false. Depends on if you want monsters. I like monsters, so I'll leave it to true. Uh, view distance ten, 
I wouldn't really change that unless you do not want chunks, a lot of chunks loading, which, and if you decrease this, people will see less, but it will also decrease lag in your server. So generate structures, uh, leave this to true or false, basically this, uh, this generates pyramids in the desert, uh, temples in the jungle, um, NPC villages, strongholds, uh, nether fortresses, all stuff like that. Now message of the day, uh, basically it's what's under your server name, so I would, if it's stupid craft, um, make it a stupid server or something. I don't care. So yeah, that's that. So, once we did that, um, ooh, I still have this running. Oh, it's not good. Oh well. I'll stop it. Yeah, you do not want to edit your config or anything while your server is running. It's not a very smart idea, but I don't know why I was doing it. So yeah. Basically, since I edited all that stuff, I can now log in. I can go on my server. And now it's just a stupid server. So, congratulations. You have officially made your Minecraft server.